This multi-million record selling artist isn't exactly known for taking suggestions, but that hasn't stopped legions of fans from sending him ideas for his next song. In fact, he's bombarded with so many pitches that he's called it the bane of his existence. However, that being said, there was one time that he did make an exception. I guess it was an opportunity just too good to pass up. After all, when an 80s icon literally asks you to make fun of her, how are you going to hold back on that? You got to go for it. And we're not holding back either. Get ready. It's the completely unexaggerated, absolutely true story about one of the greatest songs of our time. I'm kind of being sarcastic. Am I? Find out next, coming up on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. I'll tell you what, if you've ever collected wacky packages or garbage pill kids, you're gonna dig this channel. Nostalgia all the time. Make sure you subscribe below right now. I think you'll dig it. Check the box, all that business. We also have a Patreon page that helps us keep this a daily offering. All right, in honor of his new movie today, we're once again giving you the Weird Al treatment. In the past, you know, we've covered Eat It. It doesn't matter if it's boiled or fried, just eat it. Fat. Who's fat? We've also covered Smells Like Nirvana. But for this episode, we're going back to the 80s to take an in-depth look at uh, 80s parody that has a bit of a twist. Great story to this one. So let's get into it. By the time Weird Al released his third album, Dare to be Stupid, in 85, it was clear that he was here to stay. No longer just an unknown accordion-willing goofball, Al had broken into the mainstream to become a world-renowned accordion-willing goofball. <laughs> There's no denying that... You know, Weird Al, a.k.a. the Eat It guy, had become a household name at this point. His Michael Jackson parody, Eat It, had reached number 12 on the Hot 100. And that was the breakthrough that he never expected would happen. Said Weird Al, the day that video went into heavy rotation on MTV, my anonymity disappeared. Literally overnight, I became a celebrity. As a person who was fairly anonymous his whole life, he'd suddenly walk down the street and people would stare at him. After that, his albums went platinum. His concert tours sold out. And that kind of success was enough to prove to Al, you know, that he'd figured out a winning formula. And that formula was parodying chart-topping artists. That was the way to go. After all, Michael Jackson's beat it had gone to number one. And his parody of it went to number 12. So in the future, Al would go after more chart toppers. There was MJ's Bad. Tiffany's remake of I Think We're Alone Now. Dire Straits Money for Nothing. Be a Beverly and Coolio's Gangsta's Paradise. It's another story. But he'd keep uh, plenty of top 10 hits in his crosshairs as well. But to follow up the success of Eat It, you know, Weird Al turned his attention to a rising star who had just turned in a number one hit of her own, Madonna. And the reason he did it was, well, she requested it. Like Al, Madonna's career was just taken off. The summer of 83, she released her debut album, Madonna, that went to number eight in the US and featured three top 20 hits. There was Holiday. <laughs> Lucky Star. Yeah, you must be my lucky star. And Borderline. Borderline. Like Her 1984 follow up, Like a Virgin, kept the hits coming with Material Girl, Dress You Up, Into the Groove, Angel, and of course, the title track. Written by Billy Steinberg and Tom Kelly, Like a Virgin was Madonna's first number one hit on the Billboard Hot 100. I mean, the song garnered a lot of attention even before it was released, as thanks to uh, Madonna's provocative performance on the first MTV Video Music Awards. Happened in September of 84. The material girl was unveiled at the top of a larger-than-life wedding cake, 
remember. Dressed in a white wedding dress and wearing a belt buckle that said, boy toy. After climbing down from the cake, Madonna spent much of the song writhing across the stage. It was a sex charge showing and a defining pop culture moment of the 80s. However, this was uh, quite a different interpretation than Billy Steinberg had intended when he wrote the song. Having just gone through a bad breakup, Steinberg's lyrics were about starting over with a new relationship, a pure beginning. However, Madonna flipped the script and sensationalized the, the song with sexuality and not just for MTV performance. In her Like a Virgin video, Madonna played up her sensual interpretation. It was filmed in Venice and in New York. It featured scenes with Madonna once again in a wedding dress and dancing suggestively on a gondola. Towards the end, she meets a man wearing a lion mask who carries her uh, off to bed. Like a Virgin was one of Madonna's most popular songs, and it essentially turned her into an icon, a pop superstar. So you'd think it would be an obvious pick for Weird Al's next album, right? Not exactly. In fact, the concept of Like a Virgin wasn't Al's idea at all. It was actually Madonna's. So like I said at the outset, Weird Al isn't in the habit of taking parody suggestions. In later years, he would call it the bane of his existence. He pretty much can't go anywhere in public without someone coming up to him with an idea for a song. But as much as he tries to discourage this kind of behavior, for Madonna, Al was willing to make that one exception. Said Al, Madonna was actually the person who suggested that I do the parody like a surgeon. She was apparently you know, talking to a friend of hers as they were walking through New York City one day. And she just happened to wonder aloud, I wonder when Weird Al is going to do a parody of Like a Virgin called Like a Surgeon. Well, as fortune would have it, Madonna's friend just happened to know Al's manager, Jay Levy. So she passed along the message. When it got back to Al, he said, not a bad idea. Thanks, Madonna. Think I will. However, there is another, let's just say, apocryphal account. It's featured on the sitcom How I Met Your Mother. So in this telling, Al is reading through a bag of fan mail, and he comes across a letter from eight-year-old Ted Mosby. Al starts reading, you know, Dear Mr. Yankovic, eat it, change my life, blah, 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 blah. I have some ideas for new songs that you could do. In exasperation, Al cries out, Why can't they just leave me alone? Al shakes at the suggestion, Wake me up before you pogo. <laughs> Spend a whole afternoon on that one. But then Ted suggests like a surgeon, and in that moment, he has an epiphany. I finally made it through med school. Somehow. And Al starts singing the first lines and then rushes out of his office to start recording. Finny, start recording! But however it really happened, we're all just grateful that in this rare instance, Al took someone else's parody suggestion. I mean, the world is better off for it. As we continue to break down this comic classic, I want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear, the glasses that I always wear. Make sure to go to zenny.com to customize your own glasses, the color, the shape, the size, put your favorite logo or message on the sides. Very cool. Zenny.com. Madonna's Like a Virgin debuted on the Hot 100 on November 17th of 1984. It was number one on December 22nd, and it would stay there for six weeks. Shortly afterwards, on February 21st, 1985, Al had already written and recorded his spoof, Like a Surgeon. Like a Surgeon intentionally sidesteps Al's former attempts to sound as much like the original as possible. In fact, this time he uses hospital sound effects to signal the incoming parody. The song begins with what seems to be the reassuring beeps of living patients' heart monitors. However, by the end of the song, the beeps have been replaced by the ominous hum of a flatline. Between these bookends, Weird Al tells the story of an incompetent medical professional, and Al gives us every reason that he can think of to doubt his expertise as a doctor. He barely made it through med school. He was last in his class. He's trying to avoid malpractice suits. Hey. 
The sexually charged lines of Madonna's original chorus, like a virgin touch for the very first time, they give way to Yankovic's like a surgeon cutting for the very first time, which is meant to instill confidence in no one ever. <laughs> Later in the song, Al concedes, it's a fact, I'm a quack. He's the disgrace of the AMA because his patients die all before they can pay. Before they can pay. Of course, Like a Virgin is so sexually overt that you can't spoof it without addressing its sensuality to some degree. And this is where much of Like a Surgeon's humor comes from, actually. It's the incongruity of Weird Al emulating Madonna's vocal delivery that keeps the song really light. All those feminine hey's and oh's, you know. They highlight how ridiculous this song is supposed to be. You know, without this approach, Like a Surgeon would actually be much harder to listen to. I mean, if you take the lyrics at face value, they're actually kind of disturbing. Especially when at the end, Al sings, I can hear your heartbeat for the very last time. Dang. Thankfully, the music video gives us even more reasons to barrel laugh. Although this one would be just a little different from some of Weird Al's former promos. In the past and in the future, many of Weird Al's music videos featured shot-by-shot -shot parodies of the original video. However, the subject of Like a Surgeon didn't lend itself to a similar looking spoof, though there would be enough stylistic parallels to make it obvious that he was roasting Madonna. So I guess Like a Surgeon was shot in an actual hospital, just not one with any patients. Apparently the facility had gone out of business. And you know, that's probably for the best thinking about it. I'm not sure that Weird Al's antics would have gone over too well in an active hospital, especially you know, those hearing the lyrics before going into surgery. Living with a hernia indeed. Sorry, I had to go there. The video begins with the weird one walking into the ICU to find a patient flatlining. Al looks at his chart and pounds on the machine. Nothing. So he gives the patient's chest a solid thump and his heart starts beating again, just like any good doctor would do, right? Like every other Weird Al video, Like a Surgeon is a treasure trove of hilarious gags. I mean, far too many to cover them all. At first count, I think I picked out like 40-something jokes. I know there's more than that. Once Al starts singing, they just start rolling nonstop. I finally made it to med school. Really, two seconds don't go by without there being something designed to make you laugh. Whipping out an array of sharp tools that you would never want to see in an operating room, Al's team gets to work. You can see them you know, prepping by scrubbing their feet and pots and pants. Yeah, and things... Don't get any better after that. In surgery, Weird Al gets his finger cut off. I mean, a doctor pops an eyeball back into its socket. Al pokes at an exposed brain. He tries to drill through a patient's chest. I mean, just watching Al wield a chainsaw is the inspiration for many sleepless nights. If it wasn't so funny. I guess there's a fine line between absurdity and, you know, losing your lunch. But one of my favorite parts of the video is when Al starts pulling random things out of a patient's chest cavity, you know, like he's putting on a magic show. The disgrace of the AMA of a patient. There's a toy accordion, a continuous string of scarves, and by the time he gets to that white rabbit, you kind of want to start applauding him. <laughs> the video also hides several Weird Al Easter eggs. For instance, you can catch George of the Jungle playing on the EKG monitor, a patient reading a tabloid called the Midnight Star, and then patient number 27 now being served. Uh, 27, by the way, appears to be Al's favorite number. You can find a reference to the number or references to it all over the place. You know, in all of Weird Al's media songs, videos, album covers, interviews, movies, all over. Beyond that, there are still so many more gags to mention, from messy hamburgers, to play an operation with the patient's wallet, to a textbook that says, you are here. <laughs> but I think some of the funniest bits are when Al actually parodies Madonna directly. Like a surgeon, got your key. 
The video parodies several elements of Like a Virgin. You can catch Al writhing on top of a moving gurney, you know, referencing Madonna's risque gondola ride. And both videos feature a lion at the beginning. Apparently seeing a live lion roaming the hospital was enough to scare away some of Al's extras on the first day of shooting. That's what I've read. There's also a Madonna lookalike sitting in the corner of the OR filing her nails. At the end of the video, Al brings it full force with an array of Madonna dance moves. Ooh, baby, baby. Yeah. Not only from Like a Virgin, but also from prior videos like Burn It Up and Lucky Star. Now sporting a black fishnet midriff, uh, on top of his scrubs even. Al gives us an up-close shot of his gyrating stomach. I can hear your heart beat. He also throws in some high kicks and some high-pitched yes, sending us off in style, all the while ignoring the patient that's flatlining in the foreground. It's all brilliant, always brilliant. Weird Al, true master of his craft. Like a surgeon landed on Al's third studio album, Dare to be Stupid, released on June 18, 1985. It includes a total of 11 tracks. He also takes aim at Cindy Lauper with Girls Just Wanna Have Lunch. Oh, girls just wanna have lunch. There's Huey Lewis with uh, I Want a New Duck. I want a new duck. I'm out what I think. And the Kinks with the Star Wars classic Yoda. The album also features stylistic parodies that capture the feel of an artist or genre. The title track, Dare to be Stupid, is an example of this. I mean, here Al spoofs Devo's style and not a particular song, actually. Dare to be stupid, take some wooden nickels, look. Incidentally, Dare to be Stupid was also featured on the Transformers, the movie soundtrack, which was released the following year. <laughs> Definitely couldn't pass that one up as an 80s kid. The record also contains imitations of Elvis, doo-wop, and science fiction soundtracks. And then, of course, Dare to be Stupid is the second album to feature Al's famed polka medley. Though it's the first to be exclusively made up of recent hits, called uh, Hooked on Polkas. Al lampoons a long list of artists who probably wish Al would have given them a little bit more attention. In it, Al takes jabs at, uh, let's see, Mick Jagger, there's ZZ Top, Tina Turner, Hall and Oates, yes. Owner of a lonely heart, owner of a lonely heart, my bad. Twisted Sister, Quiet Riot, Kenny Loggins. Loose, foot loose, kick off the Sunday shoes. Nina, Duran Duran, and of course, Frankie goes to Hollywood. After its release, Dare to be Stupid promptly went gold and reached number 50 on the Billboard 200. And in 2003, it also went platinum here in the United States. Coming in at number 47, Like a Surgeon is Weird Al's fourth highest charting song on the Billboard Hot 100. It smells like Nirvana reached number 35. As I said, Eat It went to number 12 and White and Nerdy broke the top 10 at number 9. On the Cashbox chart, Like a Surgeon did a little better. It reached number 41. Internationally, it picked at number 37 in Canada and went to number 19 in Australia. If you're looking for Like a Surgeon in pop culture media, you're going to find a sparse showing. Not a lot of Weird Al songs were featured in film and television. Earlier, I did mention How I Met Your Mother. That's about it, though. But of course, Al has done a lot of voice acting and made a lot of fun cameos. And he definitely has a strong presence on the internet and on YouTube. Just because I'm white and nerdy. Just because I'm white and nerdy. All because I'm white and nerdy. In 2010, Like a Surgeon became part of the satirical Funny or Die web short. It was weird, the Al Yankovic story. Whoa! Like a surgeon. In it, Yankovic is played by Aaron Paul, and he has a love affair with Madonna, who's played by Olivia Wilde. The short, including the love affair, was expanded into the newly released Weird, the Al Yankovic story. But this time, Yankovic is played by Daniel Radcliffe, 
and Madonna is played by Evan Rachel Wood. Madonna, I was wondering if you were going to do a parody of my song, Like a Virgin. The movie has been billed as the unexaggerated true story about the greatest musician of our time. From a conventional upbringing where playing the accordion was a sin, a Weird Al rebels and makes his dream of changing the words to world-renowned songs come true. An instant success and sex symbol, Al lives an excessive lifestyle and pursues an infamous romance that nearly destroys him. Ah, it's guaranteed to be the best Weird Al movie since UHF. Weird Al Yankovic in UHF, the movie. So what did Madonna think of Like a Surgeon? Well, seeing how she suggested it, you'd think it would be a positive thing. However, I couldn't find any Madonna comments about Like a Surgeon. So I had to settle for the next best thing. Actually, in truth, this is way better than the next best thing. In 1985 on Al TV, Al asked Madonna about the parody in a mock interview. Al TV, the most fun you can have without being handcuffed. And I think he got the answer that we were all kind of expecting. Weird Al says, say, you remember my song Like a Surgeon, don't you? And Madonna kind of edited it and said, yeah, I remember that record. Say, you remember my song Like a Surgeon, don't you? Yeah, I remember that record, yeah. Al says, tell me, how do you think it's affected your career? And Madonna says, I think that's really what's crossed me over and given me the exposure that I have now. Al says, well, I'm glad to hear it. So there you go. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Madonna owes her career to Weird Al and Like a Surgeon. Here's what the song's co-writer Billy Steinberg thought of Al's parody. How did you feel when you heard uh, the Weird Al take on it? Like a surgeon, hey, for the very first Tom Kelly and I actually participated a little bit with Weird Al. So he wrote his parody and then we met with him and I thought it was good fun. Any child of the 80s remembers the distinct moment that they listened to their first Weird Al album all the way through. My first Al record was Weird Al Yankovic in 3D, which I actually got for my birthday. But I remember Dare to be Stupid just as much because I bought it shortly after it came out with my own allowance. I gotta tell you, I savored the, the Sonic Comics takedown of so many artists I loved, especially Madonna. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Leave us a comment about Weird Al and Like a Surgeon. What gags from the music video did I miss? Let's talk about it below. Is this Al's funniest video from the 80s? What are your memories of it? Let's talk about it below. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to check out the rest of our Weird Al installments. Covered a lot of Al's songs, Eat It, as well as his 90s comeback hit, Smells Like Nirvana. Also, make sure to subscribe below so you never miss out on our videos. We would love to have you as part of our community. Until next time, three chords and the truth.